to the Mad Trio podcast. This week it's the gruesome two, so we have the California pariah, Jonathan Charney and James the Fat and Stevens. Hello! <clears throat> so I was thinking of songs that perpetually irritate you at some point. So I've come up with my three. And I, I figured you, you can come up with some. Right. So I've got, technically it's four, but since two of them are by the same band, I'm using it as three. So Time and Money by Pink Floyd. This is... This is overplayed by every oldies and rock station known to man. <coughs> God Smacks Voodoo. I loved the song when it first came out. Uh, but going to school, I remember the school bus. It was played every single day, at least two or three times on the ride to school. Uh, the song Black Hole Sun. I like Black Hole Sun. I used to like it. I'm not a big fan of it now. And honorable mentions, pretty much anything done by Alanis Morissette. Never really. There's one song of hers I kind of like. The rest of the stuff just drives me nuts for some reason. Hmm. Yeah, I I actually don't have a specific one off the top of my head. Come on, there has to be at least one. Well, um. It's not like I'm worried about saying any. It's just, I, I mean, I don't, I kind of stopped. You remember back when I stopped listening to the radio and I stopped listening to radio for at least like a decade. Um, yeah, but like on your Pandora playlist, some of these still come up. Like, so like every time the time and money come up, I'm always skipping it because I really don't like the songs anymore. I liked it originally. And they just, it's one of those things like, okay, songs that you hear over and over again, no matter what, if it's on movies, All popular Star. media. <laughs> Smash wow. Mouth. There, there's one I can think of right off the top of my head. Um, wow. I know I kind of kind of pulled that out of nowhere. <laughs> uh, what about uh, um, was it that uh, that thing you do uh, that was? <laughs> you know I I must be really good at tuning that shit out. Um, well, because that that was that movie that was from the that thing you do that the the movie with Tom Hanks. You know about the band The I, Wonders. Yeah, but it's been a long time. Apparently, it was I've made by it. Fountains of Wayne. Oh, Stacy's mom. Never really dun, bothered dun, me, dun, but I really dun. never, I never really listened to it. Oh man, that's true. Um, I, I wow. guess the Papa Roach one, a big one that they. Oh, 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 oh! Now I know that. Now these are the newer ones. <laughs> Sound of Silence by was disturbed. it Disturbed? I kind of like. Uh, I one. hate it. I, I like literally original. actually hate it. I mean, I am a. Not the biggest so, fan of Simon and Garfunkel, but that is one of my so favorite songs like, by you, them. So is it like Matthew Lillard and CL Punk and SL, SLC Punk where his that vein in the forehead pops out type of hate? No, I just change the stationer and just start making fun of it. Um, <laughs> and then um, it's not so much, I guess it's not the new one. Um, I don't like uh, uh, Shinedown's cover of um, Leonard Skinner's song. The, uh, I'm trying to think of which one they did recently. Um, is it one of the major popular ones, or is it yeah, it's one of the popular ones? But so it's I like was at the. Is it the Tuesday's Gone? No, it was a. Uh, I can't think of it. Freebird. Needle in the spoon. Oh my god, if they did Needle in the Spoon, I'd be shocked. Because I was hoping. I was like, I, I, mean, like I, literally, I was hoping it was Needle in the no, Spoon. Because I'm like, okay, I want to hear it. Cause it's, um, no, they did. i got to pull it up. I can't think of it off the top of my head. I'm just drawing a blank. But they did it at Aftershock. And I'm like sitting there and I'm like, I, you know, I like the fact that, you know, they're. The I like the original song. Uh, um, well, I'm pulling up Shine Down right now. It should probably come up. Um, Simple Man. I don't know why I couldn't think of that. Um, but, yeah, they, they did a cover of Simple Man, which they I like the song, but I prefer the Leonard Skinner one. They don't, I don't know, to me, when you hear Sh uh, Shine Down, that does the, the song Simple Man, this just doesn't, I could see Needle in the Spoon, but not, Simple Man just seems kind of a weird yeah, choice. Yeah, but it's a popular song that a lot of people know, and, you know, I'm like sitting there, and I, you know, that so was, was the kind thing of I thought of at the concert, is that I really don't like Shine Down. I'm, I don't like a lot of modern bands. Apparently, I really am that grumpy old man who's like telling people to get off my effing lawn. Well, there's, yeah. There's not a lot of modern music to me that really speaks to me. <laughs> but that's probably because, you know, you've got, got 100 years worth of music to choose, so. 
Yeah, I mean, but the one that really bugs the shit out of me is the the disturbed sound of silence. It is, it's torture. It is torture to hear that song to me. Honestly, it doesn't because he me. slows it down so much. I actually, and it's, I mean, the pace of the song isn't isn't necessarily quick to begin with, but it's like he draws it out in a way that it just like it's that's, like see that chalk funny. on a on a freaking. <laughs> Bored. That's I, funny because like, that's one. Just that's one of the on reasons. Type shit, but I hate it. It's one of the reasons I actually like it. I like because I like the fact he slows it down a little bit, trying to make it a, a little bit more of a haunted feel to it. That's the only reason why I kind of like it. Feel to it, like yeah. I mean, because if you watch the actual music video, they no, I've try, seen the music video it seems and it's to still that, trash to me. But they, they seem to me like they want to add a more haunted feeling type of thing. I don't actually disagree. I mean, it's not the greatest cover in the world. But um, honestly, there are some bands, in my opinion, that are just really hard to cover, and that's one of them. Simon and Garfunkel, I just, I, I don't think you can cover well, personally. Um, yeah. Well, I'm trying to think. There was another band, and I actually liked them. Um, oops, that is not what I wanted. Um. Oh, here we go. That should answer it. Nope. That was <laughs> not it. It wasn't Bad Wolves. Um, the ones that they just did... It wasn't them. Why am I finding... Anyway, um, there was another band that did the Zombies song by the Cranberries. Interesting. And I can't remember the, the band's name off the top of my head, and Google's not helping me. I'm, everything's going out wow. of my brain. But they redid the zombie one. Wow. The band Cranberries? Yeah, they did the remember the zombie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm zombie. just thinking there's there's a band that you don't. It's kind of obscure. Uh, yeah, now. a lot of people didn't really think about it, but there was a cover of it. Wow. And, um, God, I haven't uh, think about that forever. But uh, they did. It was not by Bad Wolves. God, damn you, people! <laughs> I know it wasn't. <laughs> anyway, um, but a uh, death metal band did it. And it was actually pretty damn good. I actually liked it. Um, Interesting. Yeah, but it was actually pretty good. I was like, kind of surprised. They, do they do it like hardcore or more towards like Alice Cooper style? Kind of a mix, actually. But they did really good justice to it. If you can find it, I really if like. I want to hear it. I'm kind of curious. Yeah, it, somebody's saying it was disturbed. It wasn't disturbed. So I, I don't. I don't really want to talk a whole lot about the the elections that just came up. But there is something that made me laugh here in California. Nancy Pelosi won a Senate seat, and she's 85, which means she'll be in her early 90s to mid-90s by the time she's up for re-election. I, I gotta say, what the hell do they give politicians that not only do they live to a long age, they stay employed that long? 90? I mean, come on, that's like Strom Thurmond. I'm pretty amazed because if, if I, I don't, if I live to ninety, I definitely don't think I'm going to be cognizant enough to run for the U.S. Senate. Hmm. I mean, that's pretty amazing, don't you think? Yeah. Because like I don't, you know, I, I mean, I'm by, sick of the dynasties. <clears throat> they just need to die. I mean, minus her politics. <laughs> I guess that didn't come out right. Well, actually, I think I didn't mean it. Well, I, and I, I don't even mean your <laughs> politics. I'm just like, there's like all, if you take a look at the United States Senate, it's, it's like the wayward home for elderly parents. <laughs> Cause I don't think there's, there's, well, um, I, I, I think the average age in the U S Senate, like a young person <laughs> is like 60. Yeah. But okay. So the funniest thing, I, I don't know. Um, uh, there was on a. It was on, I think it was on Fox, and they were talking about um, one of the judges. Oh, that's right. It was a judge. Um, fell. And, um, it was Ruth Gator Ginsburg. Yes, thank you. Uh, I was trying to pull up her name. Ginsburg, excuse me. But she broke, a few, she broke three of her <clears throat> ribs. And on the news, they were talking about what happens to elderly people when they fall at that age? And this person's still supposed to be making and setting policies. But she falls and they're concerned that she's going to die because of her age. 
I mean, I feel so sorry and, for her. A bit. Well, I, the way I look at it is that, I mean, she may still be snappy and witty with her mind, but it, your body doesn't keep up. Yeah, well, luckily, you, you know, as a judge, you sit there. But, yeah, I mean, when I heard that, I was like, man, that sucks. She's actually working because she fell at the at the Supreme Court building. But, I mean, like, are, are, are they going to have, well, I guess they, I was going to say, are they going to have, like, ADA compliancy through all federal buildings? But they kind of do already. Yeah, it, but, I mean, it's just one of those is kind of like. You know, realistically, I don't necessarily care about the age of the judge as long as they're not, like, senile. And there's nothing about her that I've ever seen that, to, that, that seems to be that she's mentally deficient. Have you listened to Nancy Pelosi ever talk? I was trying not to get into my politics. That, well, I'm just putting that out there. I I'm, mean, I'll like, be honest. Nancy have you Pelosi, heard her quotes? I mean, they're worse. Some, than, they're worse than, than some of the George things, W. Bush. I say some of the things, and not to, to get into politics. I'll be honest. Have worried me. Have worried me a little bit. But you know. I hate, at 85 years old, I just hope I'm mentally there. I mean, I'm still amazed. She actually doesn't look that bad. She doesn't seem to be that bad at, like, 85. Like, I know I've met people who are 85 that look like they're 120. I mean, she's still, I don't know, she's in really good shape. I just got, I'm really actually kind of impressed. Not anymore. Her ribs are hurting. No, well, I wasn't talking about Ruth Bader oh, Ginsburg. I... I was talking about Pelosi. Hey, I... Uh, um, just uh, we don't want to get into politics, yeah. I guess. So I'll just let it go. So I, I don't know. I was just, I was just kind of amazed at that. Like, according to something I just pulled up, the average age in the Senate is sixty-seven years old. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Sixty-seven years old. I mean, if you're able to collect Social Security, I don't think you should be in politics. I'm actually, I'm, I, I don't. I, <laughs> no, because realistically, the only, wait. the only people can really afford to, to even start doing politics are people who are older. Because I wouldn't be able to run for politics because I've got a family to feed. Well, I mean, actually, I'm just going to say we can't run for president, but actually we can. <laughs> yeah, true. I forgot. Uh, it's 35 still, right? Yeah. And I didn't think that had changed, but I assumed it was still 35. So I just, just kind of reading something real quick. Apparently the Johnny Quest movie is still in the works. Apparently it's been in the works since the 90s. <laughs> um... The Johnny Quest? Johnny Quest. So I don't know if and if any of you don't uh, actually know who Johnny uh, Quest is, believe it or not, it's kind of somewhat of an obscure character. It did run, one run in the 1960s. Um, if I remember correctly, it was shut down because people were complaining how violent it actually was. It's a fairly violent cartoon for the 1960s. Really well done. Amazing drawing style for the time, in my opinion. It was resurrected in the 80s, at least for one run that I'm aware of. There were technically two seasons in the 90s done by two different studios. So the second season's kind of Who crappy the looking. studios? Um, I don't remember. Uh, the, the, the 90s one was actually done by Cartoon Network. The animation's different the second season. <coughs> in 2009's, it was, 2009, it was reported that Zac Efron and Dwayne Johnson had been... Uh, Dwayne Johnson had been called to play Ray Spannon... Zach Afron was uh, allegedly supposed to play Johnny Quest. Zach Afron's officially officially too old to be playing Johnny Quest. I'm just surprised the fact that they're trying to do this because Johnny Quest has never been successfully brought back to any sort of level. It's always done maybe one season, maybe two, and it's from everything I know, they've never done like long seasons. You know, so I think it's always been like thirteen episodes. I think of the '80s one. Yeah, um, I was never a big fan of Johnny uh, Quest, though. I mean, I love it's not one I got Johnny into. Quest. I've always been a big fan of it, but I also think it kind of scratches me where, me where I itch on when it comes to um, adventure. So, uh, adventure type of art cartoons. So the 1980s Johnny Quest, it's called The New Adventures of Johnny Quest, actually did 13 episodes. Um this one was strange because they brought a character called Hard Rock, who apparently was an ancient warrior who, standing guard duty near some sort of magic stone, turned him into living rock. It's the 1980s. Um, but it was never really that popular, well, that I'm aware of. Like, my dad knows of it because he grew up in the 60s. 
so I, 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 I'm assuming it was fairly big, but it's, realistically, it's very obscure compared to the Flintstones. Or the Jetsons. Oh, or Scooby-Doo. Um, I'm just surprised they would try to even remotely resurrect it. I ain't got anything, and I don't. I think as far as any of the cartoons back then, I mean, I would go for the Flintstones. Well, they, I mean, <laughs> I saw quite a few of them, but I mean, do you remember the Monkeys TV show? Yeah, yeah. I watched that when they re <coughs> broadcast in the eighties. But I mean, if you think about it, they've done Flintstones. They've done. Uh, they've never done a Jetsons live action. I don't think they should. They've done Jetsons movies. They've done uh, Scooby Doo live action, and they've done. I haven't seen the Scooby Doo live action. Live actions, it? live actions suck, <laughs> in my opinion. If you really want to see a an actually really good Scooby Doo cartoon that came out, it's Scooby Doo on Zombie Island. Oh yeah, in a lot of people my, like that one. In my opinion, it's one of the better ones that came out. It's more of an adult theme versus the the other ones come out because they have like Scooby Doo and Kiss. Um, oh, God, Scooby -Doo I and Kiss, forgot about that one. Well, the Scooby Doo and Kiss actually has one of my favorite Kiss songs on it, so I kind of dug it. Yeah, but I forgot I they made, did that. I was made for loving you. Yeah, but I forgot that they <laughs> did the uh, one with Kiss. Jeez. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm just kind of thinking there's a bunch of other obscure cartoons that nobody really remembers. You know, if you want to talk about, like, the Herculoids, <laughs> the Impossibles. I mean, I just, I don't know. Did you, I, I, th I know we talked about this before, and you weren't a big fan of Voltron, were you? Uh, in the 80s, uh, 80s and 90s, I loved Voltron. I haven't I really watched it a lot since. I don't like any of the new ones. I uh, did you watch the one that they had? Uh, that Netflix, they have on Netflix. Yeah. I watched. Mm, I watched half the, the the first season. I think I finished the first season. This actually got, gets better. Um, but what I was going to mention is that Netflix also put out one that was like the creators of the new Voltron picked their favorite episodes of Voltron, and then they play it. Uh, the original? The original 80s. Um, my issue with that one is they don't really do it in order, though. Eh, and doesn't... then there's discussing, you know, the differences in Voltron and everything. And, do they talk um, about what the actual source material? If you're, not, if you're not familiar with it, Voltron is actually based off of an 80s Japanese anime called Go Lion. If you're not... America had a tendency to bastardize Japanese animation and make it its own. <laughs> I, you know yeah. which hey I, I'm I'm totally fine with um and if you can if Robotech for example is actually uh, is actually a Japanese animation called Macross. Um, wait. Mm. Believe it or but not, I don't I don't think Robotech is really that. I mean, if you're a fan of anime, you would know Robotech, but I don't think very many people out there, just yeah. uh, cartoon fans, would know Robotech very well. I think you have to be a certain age, honestly. Oh, it's just like Speed Racer. My mother-in-law knows Speed Racer, and it's Japanese. True, but I mean, Speed Racer was actually pretty common back in the 80s. Uh, you don't think Robotech was? Not as much as Speed Racer, for one. That's true. And not as much as Dragon Ball, either. That I don't know of. I didn't see. I didn't see DBZ until the mid '90s when it was on Cartoon Network. Well, yeah, it was. It was around since yeah. the uh, uh, mid '80s. It's been around forever. Yeah, it has. It's a fairly old cartoon series. It is. It's a good cartoon series. I, I enjoyed it. Um, I, don't, I just keep. I just keep trying to think of what cartoon series could they compare. Res well, like you resurrect. Like I like Johnny Quest. I think one of the issues you're going to have is the modern sensibility. I think if they do Johnny Quest serious, like serious like the cartoon, it was fairly tongue-in-cheek. It was more based off of, for kids. But if you do it a little bit more serious than what they're probably going to do, they're going to make it super tongue-in-cheek. As, as long as it's not as bad as what they did to the Dukes of Hazzard, oh, which God. that pissed me off because I'm, I'm very big on the source material. I think you've got to do justice to the source material at some level. I thought they kind of pissed on it a little. That kind of bugged me to some degree. And I, by the way, not a big Dukes of Hazard fan, not at all. And I thought, I thought I'm they, not either. I thought they did kind of a shitty thing to it personally. Maybe they should do Sledgehammer as a cartoon. Dude, I, I'd pay to see that actually. I mean, you think you would give them big guns and everything? That would be fucking. Actually, you know what? I think they should resurrect. And I think they should res. I want to see SWAT cats res resurrected. Not as live action, because I think it'd be ridiculous. But I want to see... Well, okay, so speaking of live action versus oh, cartoon. I'm sorry, I just thought of it. Uh, centurions. They could do a live, action, a live action Centurions. I'm not sure. Ryan's the only person I know who knows who that cartoon is. I do, way. but I'm just still... 
I mean, like, how? <laughs> I think you could copy the basic idea. Uh, um, you know, you could do, you could have these, these, these suits that can, you know, I think you could do it really well. And I don't think you'd have to do as much explaining about how it works like you would have to back in it. Because some of the technology, I think you could just, you know, let people assume. So, speaking <laughs> of, of cartoon and live action, um, and this is going to be interesting because we do have a comparison of live action previous versus new live action. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now, to me, I enjoy the new ones that they came out with. I I think they went a little bit more, as you'd like to say, tongue-in-cheek on certain things. But I liked what they did with the Turtles versus what they did with the Turtles in the 90s. So here's... here's uh, late 80s, too, right? Wasn't it 80, yeah, it was like 80, 80, 80, 89? 89? Here's, here's my issue. The second, the the new Ninja Turtles are closer to Ninja Turtle Two: The Secret of the Ooze and Turtles in Time. In my opinion, that's the feeling they have. Versus my favorite, which is the original Ninja Turtles live action, because I love that movie. Took itself very seriously for the most part, which is one of the reasons I liked it. Yes, I know I'm talking taking it serious when you have giant, uh, you know, humanoid turtles. You know, come on. But I actually thought it was well done. Um, I haven't seen. No, this I haven't is seen, 1990. I haven't seen the the second one. I liked the first one. I want to see the second one. If they redo it, I'm hoping they they redo it a little bit more on the serious side. I thought the newer ones were a little bit too kind of tongue in cheek for me. But <laughs> it's also because of my age, and the nostalgic factor of how much I loved the first one, and I really loved the second one. It says 1990. I thought it came out yeah, later that, than that. That could be. I, I, I mean, it was around the same time, so it was just... I don't know. I just don't like... I don't like the way they're treating the source material. I, actually, let me scratch that. I want to see a different director than the guy who did it. Wasn't it was, Bay? Yeah. I was going to say. I, I want to see somebody else besides Michael Bay. Because it's, it's definitely a Michael Bay movie. And, and by the way, at this point, I, I can't begrudge the guy because he's making bank and people enjoy his movies for the most part who aren't <laughs> movie reviewers. Um, I, I'm kind of biased because <laughs> I'm picky as fuck. I really am. I've gotten worse, by the way, since doing Real Flix reviews <laughs> all those years. Well, I mean, you blame yourself because, I mean, we went through a lot of movies. Yeah, um... I don't know what other movies like. There are some cartoons out of the '80s you could redo. Like, I'd love to see. I'd love to see a good GI Joe movie. Um, because GI Joe has so much potential to be a good movie, but I, I want to see a more serious take on it. Than with Dwayne Johnson. Yeah, and even, even I the, didn't. Was that supposed to be serious? I only saw bits and pieces of it. I never really got yeah, into it. The, the second one with Dwayne, Dwayne Johnson, I think, was just supposed to be an entertaining movie. Which, by the way, I think it hit what it was. It, it hit what it was what it wanted. But I want to see a legit serious take, not some slack stick slap stick comedy like the first one. They had the Wayans brother on there, even though I like the guy. I want to see one that's actually hardcore, true, uh, true to form, like. When I grew up, that's I thought that was the cartoon was a little bit more serious than it turned out to be. I want to see a serious take on it. I got to agree with you there. I always thought it was more of like a serious type of thing than just a comedy. I mean, it was... Yeah, I got to agree with you there. Because, I mean, it really wasn't like, ha, 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 through the whole thing. I mean, it wasn't like it was, that. It was goofy. I just want to see... I mean, it was no Inspector Gadget or Darkwing Duck or anything no. like that. I mean, it was... More of, um, I would say, it was eighties. It was eighties kids yeah. tongue in cheek. Yeah, <clears throat> I want to see a serious take on it because everybody. I don't know. I I really see serious takes on most things. I think they could do a decent job, but I want a serious take where everybody doesn't seem to fucking die. Because every time you do a serious take on everything, it seems like oh, we have to kill off this main character because this is what would happen in real life. No, you can't. You you don't have to be effing lazy. And kill off a character for a fucking pop. I'm sorry. That's lazy writing. Unless it's part of the story where it actually makes sense, killing main characters just to kill them off generally has a tendency to piss me off. 
Look at Game of Thrones. The fucker does a good job of killing off main characters, and it generally makes bloody sense. Well, that's the thing. Is like, I mean, it's not the fact that George R. R. Martin is being a dick. I mean, it's all part of the storyline. Yeah, but I mean, you'll, you'd be like, oh, you dick, you killed off my main favorite character, I don't you know? Care. Um, what, man, what other cartoons? Like, I'm never really attached to main characters and I would anything to, much. I mean, I, I'd be pretty pissed off if Arya died, but I would I love to mad. see a Thundercats new him. Thundercats cartoon. Well, they did. They did try to reboot it, and they just. Mm. Well, car- the problem is Cartoon Network. Um, I'd love to see it live action. I just don't think it would go well. CG might be fun, but even then, I don't think it would go well. Actually, you know what they could do, and I think they could do really well, is like C Lab Twenty Twenty. Mm, you see, could, that wasn't my thing. You got into that kind of sci-fi stuff, and I really was. But you're a big, more of a big sci-fi fan than I am, as far as you, like the '50s shit. I think you could do it. The problem is you have the abyss, and I think that to me is that's the anything underwater. You're always comparing the abyss. You saw the movie Sphere. I'm comparing it to Abyss. So. Mm. Most of the Abyss. I was never really a big Abyss fan either. I thought it was a pretty amazing movie, actually. Um, I don't know. See, what other cartoons? I, I, I know we're kind of short of topics, partially because, you know, at this point, Ryan would tell us to try. <laughs> he would go on his little rants. Yeah, usually we're used to 30 minutes of him. Nee, 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 nee. Um, but, okay, so I had a... I think I actually still had it up in a different tab. Um, so... I don't know if you heard about the car accident near us. And what? The car accident on Monday near us. No. All right. Well, there's a car accident. And anyways, I won't go into very much details, but it brought up something interesting to me. Uh, It became a topic, but what do you think the standard for DUI as far as marijuana is concerned? And what should it be or what do you think it is? How do you test? Because marijuana stays in your system for a very long time. I think you'd have to and do it. And the THC counts. I think you'd have to do it to level of impairment. I well, that's what I found, too. But the problem with that is um, the way that they would do it is they'd do a field sobriety test. I've known plenty of stoners who could do that without a fucking problem. But even still, you could fight that in the court system over the fact that you just went through a very traumatic situation. I think they So should your ask... body would be not responding in a very... I'm talking about if, it, if there's a crash. Yeah, yeah. Not, yeah. not being stopped by the officer or so on the side. Of, not, not a traffic stop. So if you're moving, you know, if you're going over both lanes, a guy pulls you over, smells weed. No, no, no. I'm versus talking about... the guy, fl- yes. you flip over your car yeah. or you run into a wall... Hit somebody else. Run into a pizza place. Actually, they should. They should have made a drive-through. They should have asked. Uh, do you does do hot pockets sound good? You and your hot pockets. Um, I fucking hate hot pockets. I know you hate hot pockets. Um, I don't care. Honestly, I don't know. Now they were talking also about an oral swab because they don't do bre- blood, uh, blood and breath test for it. But you still it, run in the same thing of it being in your system, unless it stays. Yeah. In, unless, unless the only thing I could think of, unless your saliva contains it for a shorter period of time. I, so, I don't know the the thing about that. You, we would have to have Ryan here for that. Um, <laughs> but you, you get what I'm kind of saying, though. Yeah, it's like it be because test. they could do it off a THC count, which is, but you have to have a base comparison first. Yeah, and the problem with that is you can get popped, and you couldn't. You probably you could have not had a joint for like for three weeks, and you could still peg the system depending yeah. on how much you actually. Smoke. Or if you had like an edible three days ago. Yeah. Edibles are high THC counts. I think, um, I think you'd have to do unlike alcohol, where like in California it's point oh point oh yeah point zero eight or above. I think you'd yes, have it to is do. 0. You'd have to do level of intoxication. Like, can you physically drive? And you'd you'd have to come up with a test that would test that would you could test their their uh, their reactions because that's what it is because it would because weed slows down your reactions you'd have to figure out how do you it's not about the guy falls over it's like okay how long does it take the guy to correct himself from falling over 
you know, you stand on That'd one leg. That'd be kind leg. of funny seeing officers be pushing people on the side of the road. Well, because I'm thinking you tell the guy, to, you tell the guy to stand on one leg and you hold then, it for three seconds, and then lean over for a little bit. You know, can't does he immediately catch, or is it a little bit slower? Yeah, but I mean, somebody like me. <laughs> it's true. I mean, literally, like I don't have great balance, and that's that doesn't matter if it's if I'm impaired or not. That's true. Ah, that's there's. I don't know if there's to be a good way. See, the only thing I can think of is the saliva thing. Is is how how long or short does it stay in your saliva? Because your blood and tissues, it stays forever. Hmm. I'm exaggerating, but it stays yeah, for a couple well, while. Well, here's a funny story, and you'll probably get a kick out of this. Is I went in to purchase alcohol a couple weeks ago, and I was denied because the guy told me I was already drunk because of the way I was walking. So I literally turned around and showed him a scar on my back, and he sold me alcohol. I have never done that before. I've showed my ID, but I've never showed a scar on my back before. I w- that's <laughs> hilarious. You know, the funniest part is you probably could have really, it's like, you you could have made his life hell for that, too. Yeah, I, I didn't feel like that it was necessary, but, you well, know. I, I would have loved to see this reaction but, where you're like, you're just like, fuck you. <laughs> pretty much, you know, I told me I uh, suffered awesome. a spinal cord injury. It's look, real but you know i mean so I, I just i was just wondering about that because you know we were talking about that if somebody was impaired in the car wreck how if it was you know it's not necessarily saying that the marijuana is the cause of it but how would you test for that the other thing and is, would that come into play because i'm sure it would come into play in the before a judge the other thing you'd have like the the do the old factory smell the old factory sense was how strong is the sense of weed is this the smell of weed is it is it smell like it's just really good weed in a container does it smell or look like it's smoky in there what it was close smell like because i don't i really don't know if you can actually test for it because like you're, if, yeah. you do, if you do a blood test or even a piss test, it's going to come up no matter what. Yeah. I am curious, like with Ryan, if if Ryan was here, how long does it? Because he's kind of our local marijuana expert. Like, how long does it stay in your urine? Uh, from what I know, but this is a long time ago, is at least thirty days. Okay, so if you had a joint, so if you had a joint a month ago, would it be the same strain? It, it would still show up you would still test positive for THC. see it now so would it the be the same is, strength is, is if you had it 30 days ago versus an hour ago and no because it'd be higher in your higher volume in your system as far as i understand but i'm no scientist and i haven't done major research in anything to really be able to say but i know so, there's a certain thc count that would be in there um yes it would be higher if you smoked a joint the day before is what i so think here's, but, so here's so here's my thought is this say if you smoke an hour and, and say I really don't know this, but say if you smoke a joint and they sell okay it takes two hours for you to be safely to drive and two hours in weed on average is this level. They may be able to do like some sort of piss test and say okay this is what this level is. And by the way, this is a guess. I have no fucking clue. So get off my back. But, but I would also say it depends on the strain. It depends on how concentrated the THC volumes are in it because that's the thing I mean if you smoke like old school terminology Mexican bammers versus you know some high uh, medical medicinal strain the medical medicinal is going to have a higher THC or if we conjure up Jeff it'd be CBD versus you know THC and things like that yeah, that's but true. And it's I'm actually curious on how CBD oil actually tests because as far as I know there's no actual active THC in it that, but that's what I'm saying is that there's it depends on what you get yeah, that's a damn good question, how you actually test for it. I don't know. And I'm sure that California and part of their legislators are pawning over this same quandary. I bet they're doing it in Colorado and other states because they're really... <coughs> um, hold on. Let's see. They do a 12-step examination if it goes from having the subject perform a field sobriety test, but we also evaluate their physical signs take their blood pressure several times take that's the one that's kind of curious on me this is by the way a Los Angeles Time article it's um, 
uh, for police catching stone drivers isn't easy. It's March 22nd, 2018, if you want to find the article. Um, where is it? So, actually... Da, 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 da. Well, the, oh, I here we go. To a different well, well, we also evaluate things like physical signs, take their blood pressure several times, take their pulse. So that's the only thing I think you could do. The, the only thing with that is you could actually say, okay, are you a doctor? Are you a nurse? Um, damn, that's a really good question. Hey, so anybody out there, you know, it, if you know, I mean, what do they do? Well, one of the things they bring up, is, like I said, the saliva swab test. And it says this test is being employed at various checkpoints, takes eight minutes to administer and can detect trace amounts of THC. But even still, though, to me, it brings up what John said. What does this really calculate? Does this calculate like if you took it hours ago, minutes ago, week ago, a day ago? And how long does it stay in your saliva? Now, my first, my first. See, that's something I don't know. My oh. first guess is that it's probably okay. My my thought is like in your saliva probably doesn't last as long versus some other tissues like blood. So my first thought, and this is a guess by the way, so would be the fact that if you smoked a joint an hour ago, it's stronger versus if you smoked a couple of days ago, maybe. But I actually fuck. Who knows? I'm really curious. I'll have to actually. Uh, I'll have to read about this when I have some free time. But isn't this really, an interesting thing that? You know, I mean, I've, I've thought about this before, but I've never really did much thought into it because I I don't partic- part, uh, participate in taking ma- marijuana or eating it or smoking it or anything anymore. I did years ago, but so it's not a concern to me, but if we really bring it up as far as in the court systems. So due to see on saliva draw swab test, due to the increased numbers, by the way, this is on the law offices of Randy Collins. So take as a may, 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 may or may not be the most reliable source of information. So due to the increased number of drivers driving under the influence, uh, are testing drugs and DUI checkpoints. The test is roughly eight minutes long. Use the person's saliva to detect THC, crystal meth, methadone, Whoa. cocaine and several other prescription drugs there are conflicting reports to, uh, as to the accuracy of these tests these texts this test works by detecting trace amounts of drugs in, Cali- in the California driver's saliva but there can be traces of some drugs in your saliva up to three days after consuming them which is one of the things we wanted to know this leaves plenty of room for doubt in the courtroom as it's nearly impossible to prove without a shadow of a doubt in the courtroom that a person was under the influence okay so that's what I. That's what my concern is. Is how do you prove it? So, so I guess honestly, this is going to be something that the, the it's so it's going to be a. It's going to be up to the say if the guy's driving erratically. It's going to be up to the camera. Say okay, this guy's like this. It's going to be the old sniff test. Okay, I had a really strong sense of smell of weed, and you have to figure out okay, was it smoky in there, or was it just a really good container? Because that's the problem is. Some weed, no matter what container you have it in, it will reek up your fucking car. Yeah. Um, Even if it's in the trunk. Yeah. So I think it's I think it's going to have you have to be a bunch of things. I have a feeling it's going to be really hard um, until they come up a way to actually test if you did it within a couple hours. It's going to be really hard to to prove somebody got a DUI uh, was driving intex- intoxicated unless the person's all over the road. I'm mm. curious in why they would test your pulse, though. I would... See, that's the thing. It's like, I mean, if you're involved in a car accident, well, no, like, your uh, pulse is going to be high. Well, no, here's my thought. Is say if you're, you're sitting but on the couch... But what if you have low bro- blood pressure just naturally? Well, my thought, my, my thought is, what does the weed do to you? So say if you're smoking a ball or two, does your heart rate change pulse-wise um, before and after? I would say it does, but I mean, it, it like I said, it, it also depends on the person because I know some people have high blood pressure naturally. Yeah, I mean, but in theory, the see what they're saying is like you get pulled over, they would test your blood pressure, and then it would wait a little bit and test again. So by say if they do it between five minutes, is there a subtle change? You know, the question is like you said, was this person really hyped up? Because you're you're automatically going to be in flight mode, so your heart rate's going to be elevated, versus that the dude was totally chill. Would there be a change in the heart rate? I would say so. I don't know. This is super interesting. I never thought about this because I don't smoke weed. So I'm not actually worried about being pulled over. Um, Super curious about CBD oil, though. 
That's what I'm saying. It, it, different. There's way too many variations in it. <laughs> Marijuana breathalyzer. That's hilarious. Driving while high? Texas police say a marijuana breathalyzer could help. <laughs> oh my god. So, there are classic signs that somebody may be driving drunk. Weaving, speeding, sudden turns. Sergeant Matthew Dusick says cl uh, clues that someone is stoned are a bit different. Maybe running stop signs, stopping either too soon or too far behind. Waiting for a stop sign to turn green. <laughs> I, I've done that sober, so I'm not exactly sure if that's a good sign or not. Um, maybe a sign of distracted fucking driving. When light changes, problem with perception, with distances, timing, so very close to distraction driver on a phone. Uh, drug uh, recognition expert. Da, 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 let's see. That's hilarious. I don't know. I'm super curious in how this turns out, because I actually think this is going to be a problem. Because... You know, we, we, everybody knows somebody who's at least got a multiple DUIs or an alcoholic who's, who should know better. So I do actually think this is something that we need to at least control to some degree. And I would say, you know, when I was younger, I knew stoners that drove all the time, except for the fact I think these people drove better stone than they ever did sober. Some people so, did. I'm not but, sure about this. So... But th this is just something that came up recently, and just. But the big issue for me is how do you prove it be, be beyond a shadow of a doubt that this person was intoxicated at this moment? You know. I don't think you can. I don't think you can either. I don't think there's a way to do it. Um, at least not now, unless they can figure out like saliva wise or something that you know it, it's by oh it's point zero two, which means. He just smoked this versus you know point zero zero five. I mean, yeah, but that, that's what I'm saying. And what, and what point do you say that this person? I mean, what where does the THC count line get drawn? I think, that's what I'm concerned about because if you really think about it, you smoke a joint three days ago, you drive, it still shows up in your system. Is there going to be a point zero eight THC count that you can be convicted of? See, I think I actually think what this is going to end up coming down to is the sobriety test and video. I think this is come, going to come down to see if somebody gets an accident. I don't think you're going to. I don't think there's going to be a way to tell. But if they cut somebody like driving reckless, and I think they, it's going to go by the sobriety test. Well, th this is what I want to bring up too, along with this is. This, I guarantee, is the same conversation that they had when Mad went crazy and decided to force DUIs because there were people that used to drive around with open, open containers in the vehicle, and it wasn't against the law. So I knew... So there's that conversation uh, that I'm sure they had of, what if this person had a beer a couple hours ago? What if this person had a shot right before now they got I, in their vehicle? I, <coughs> I knew somebody whose mom never saw her without a beer in the car yeah. would literally have a, a a beer would be drinking a bud a bud riser when it would be empty and the bud riser was in a coolie a cool you know one of the the beer sleeves would put the thing between her legs remove the beer can throw the beer can on the floor reach behind open her cooler hit the button open the cooler pop out and in one fluid motion would uh, open it, you know, would, would grab the beer, pop the lid, put it back in the, the, the little beer koozie and drink. And then she would do this all the way to their house as a little kid. And as a little kid, because, and by the way, she was freaking straight. I mean, there was no swerving, no nothing. As a little kid, I'm like, that's a pretty amazing skill. As a parent, if I saw you with that, I'd put you in fucking traction. <laughs> so, I... Yeah, so, I mean, like, that's the thing is, like, we, we grew up in the 80s, we're Seat belts were optional. You could ride in the back of a truck. Oh, that was fun when I you was a, when I was a kid. That was a fucking blast. I was really yeah. pissed when that law passed. Oh, I was too. Because <laughs> when I was a kid, I never knew anybody who Superman out of a truck or got hurt. Granted, it happened. I bet it was. Super yeah, it did happen. Common. Yeah. But I never knew anybody. But I, I never knew anybody who got in an accident that way. Yeah, I mean that was just what we grew up doing. You know, oh, we're gonna go down the street. Okay, jump in the back of the truck as the truck is moving. On the other hand, so I, was, I mean, we were fine. On the other hand, I was really pissed about when they forced me to wear a bicycle helmet and then something down the road. I'm still pissed about that. You see, I'm not. That saved my head. 
I hit a, I hit a friend's rear tire, flipped over him, landed on my head and slid all the way down on my head, broke my helmet in two. So <laughs> it just, all right. <laughs> right. I never had anything like that happen, but I used to play chicken with telephone poles on a bike <laughs> and cars. And I never lost. <laughs> Let that sink in. <laughs> that explains a lot. <laughs> I don't know. I'm super curious on what they end up doing with the marijuana thing. Because I don't even think we really know. I think in the state of California, because it's been a Schedule One drug, which is still really weird to me. If you think about it, marijuana is in the, considered the same as heroin. I've never heard of anybody overdosing on marijuana. It makes you stupid, yes, but... So I am curious on how they do this, because as time goes on, it's going to be a more accepted drug. And so I think they're going to have to figure out, like you said, is how do they deal with, A, how do you deal with it at work? Because back in the day, having a martini at work wasn't super uncommon. No. It's now you can't do it. I'm really curious on how they handle this. In the future, I'm going to be super curious. I'm also yeah. happy to hear that it's going away from everybody thinking marijuana is a, a wonderkin. You know, it's it's like... For a while, it's like, oh, you have cancer? Smoke weed. Do you have macular degeneration? Smoke weed. Did your You arm need a get... prostate exam? Smoke weed. Did your arm get cut off in a combine accident in the farm? Rub a little weed on it. <laughs> it was Everything I read for a while, so marijuana may be the wonder it, cure. Yeah, that was exactly what I was just about to say. It, it is, to some, and still to some people, it's a wonder cure. I, I'm, I'm glad the fact that now they're starting to do some hardcore research, which, by the way, was fucking illegal. I still don't get this. It's a it's a substance, and you're making it illegal, but you're not letting people actually test what it can do. It's kind of well, a weird thing to me. The the interesting <clears throat> thing is, you know, by Colorado, a couple states over, you can get a felony, a felony, for a joint. Yeah, there's a place in Texas that's pulled over every single musician, <laughs> like I think Willie Nelson ha has gotten ticketed. I think. Oh, God, there's a rapper. Uh, Little Wayne. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I think he's got tagged. There's a bunch of famous people in this part of Texas that always gets pulled over and always gets I'm sure trouble. Snoop Dogg. Uh, Snoop Dogg's probably smart enough. He's like, yeah, you're not going to take my ass through there. I'm going to fly. <laughs> yeah. yeah <laughs> Private true. plane. <laughs> Snoop Dogg isn't, isn't as dumb as they make him out to be. Plus the fact the guy's filthy rich, so I have a feeling he's not worried about a tour bus. Probably not. He'll have the tour bus drive, and he'll just bring the weed with him. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be in a little tiny, like, smart car. Right. So, I don't know. Dang, I'll pull my Obama car over. Oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> man. Wait, you're surprised at the things that come out of my mouth after no, how many years we've been doing this? This is true. I shouldn't be... I, I, should, I should be hoping that you wouldn't say shit like that. So, uh, I don't know. We'll see. I'm curious about that. I'm also curious what's going to happen with uh, Ruth Gator Bader Ginsburg. I'm really sorry to hear she got hurt. Yeah, I am, too, but I mean... Yeah, I just found it ridiculous that they were... I mean, it is a legitimate topic of elderly people falling. But in the well, scheme was, of a policymaker... Well, that was actually my post. I, I put a Facebook post. My personal, I get on, on Facebook. On my personal Facebook page, I said, the only time most people fuck, uh, care about elderly is when they're sitting on the Supreme Court, you fucking wankers. Because it, it pisses me off. Because the only time legitimately you hear anybody concerned about some sort of elderly person is when it's a fucking Supreme Court judge or it's, Nan you know, like Nancy Pelosi, who's an elderly congressman, congresswoman. It's just like, come on, you people don't actually fucking care about the fact this person is elderly and got hurt. I mean, I'm legitimately worried about the fact that you're going to have somebody who, believe it or not, is a history maker, who's important to the conversation right now. She freaking tripped and hurt herself and can die from shit like this. It, it really bugged me, the fact that all of a sudden people are... are talking about oh what do we do for the elderly that you didn't care a fucking minute ago yeah rub a little marijuana on it <laughs> that'll help you <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah you, you can see ladies and gentlemen by how much it really did really does piss me off that nobody seems to give a shit about the elderly until it's, you know until it's some, news until it's somehow it's important it's like the fr <laughs> everybody knows somebody that you know, they didn't see one of their parents, you know, for 30 years. And all of a sudden, their parents on the deathbed. They're like, oh, my parents are dying. Ah, you didn't give a shit the last 30 fucking years. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, all I'm going to say is, hey, if, if you have problems with your parents, say hi to them once in a while. I realize it may be a lot of shit, but I guarantee most of the time you'll regret it when they're gone. Um, and 
Also, marijuana can help that relationship. When in doubt, light it up. <laughs> Uh, you can't tell them fucking tired. It's been a long fucking day. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, for the gruesome twosome, as always, thank you for listening. <laughs>